Well, you're most welcome to this talk. It's Sunday, the 22nd of September. Now, it's just tremendous that world-leading doctors, scientists and researchers choose to communicate with you through through this channel. Really quite humbling. And we have such a report today from Vibeke Manika. Now, Vibeke is in Denmark. She's a medical doctor. She's a research doctor, a data and analyst and, and well-published research medical scientist. Now, for those of you with long memories, you might remember that we interviewed Vibeke uh, in 2023 about this paper, Batch Dependent Safety of the Pfizer Vaccine uh, in Denmark. And this showed that there was really significant differences in the amount of suspected adverse reactions reported, depending on the batch <laughs> of vaccine you were lucky, or, or unlucky enough, uh, to receive. And she's now followed that up with a cross-country comparison, because who knows, Denmark could have been a fluke. Uh, she's followed it with a comparison here, where she's comparing uh, reports of uh, batch-dependent suspected adverse events of the Pfizer vaccine, comparing the work in Denmark and Sweden. So it's good that she's followed that up with a, a collaborating study, and the results do agree. They do show the, uh, the, the differences are the same in Sweden and Denmark, uh, reasonably the same. Just before we look at that data and listen to Vibika, she's on a public lecture tour in Denmark. And, and what she says is in Denmark, there's a lot of public curiosity about what has happened here with the, with the new mRNA vaccines, genetic preparations, whatever you want to call them. I must say, in the UK, talking to people, I'm not getting that very strongly um, on the channel, of course. But, but, you know, just talking to people out and about, there's a bit of curiosity deficit disorder Strange illness. I wonder how that's transmitted. Uh, so the, uh, people are interested in, in the critique of the pandemic response. They're looking at the batch dependent safety with Pfizer, comparing Denmark and Sweden. And early batches, early batches of vaccine had many more suspected adverse reactions than later batches of vaccines. Vibeke questions whether in later batches of vaccines there was less active ingredients, so they may have been less efficacious. Don't know. Data has not been released. Um, the data would be nice. But what, de what she has been able to find out from official reports is that early batches had many more su um, suspected adverse reactions than later. She's also found, and this is really quite interesting uh, and, and indeed concerning, and, and this takes us to the sort of wider implications, really, of what has been happening in Western democracies over the past few years. And I know a lot of you are very concerned as am I. Uh, I. I fear the possibility of a, a bit of a dystopia in the future, hence the, the background uh, portraits in uh, my uh, view here. Um, Vibeke has found in the people in Denmark she's talking to, mistrust of authorities um, because they haven't responded to previous data that she's presented in peer-reviewed publications and more data she's presented in peer-reviewed publications. Why hasn't this been answered by the authorities? The batch data that she's presented, and I'll show you some in a minute, has been ignored, basically. And this has generated a lack of trust in the media as well, because why aren't the media reporting on this? Why is it left to people like me to report serious scientific findings of massive public health concern, massive financial concern? Why aren't the mainstream media doing this? No, I can't answer that question, but Vibeke does report is leading to a lack of trust in mainstream media, which isn't surprising. Uh, my, my trust in mainstream media has, well, let's just say it's reduced. Um, um, mistrust for safety of vaccines in general, which is medically concerning. People are conflating previous vaccinations that aren't based on mRNA genetic technology with vaccines that are based on modern uh, uh, mRNA, messenger ribonucleic acid, genetic uh, technology. And they are really two quite different products for many reasons that we've looked into in the past on this channel. People in Denmark are also concerned about censorship. They see democracy threatened. They see reduced democracy in the rest of Western world. And people do fear dictatorship, as indeed do I. I fear a dystopian, centralised, controlled dictatorship. That is coming out quite strongly from the people that Vibeke was talking to on a lecture tour. Also frustration with doctors, because doctors aren't standing up and really, some are, of course, and they're suffering for it, some of them. But in Denmark, there's a feeling that doctors aren't standing up for their patients in the wider arena as patients feel they should be. 
people with vaccine injuries are not listened to by doctors. The people are reporting to Vibica. Now, whether that's true or not, of course, we can't tell. That's, but that's the perception of these people in Denmark. And if the doctors aren't taking the reports of vaccine injuries and, and running diagnostic tests on that, if there's not an accurate diagnosis, then how can you get the appropriate treatment if you haven't got the accurate diagnosis? Because you need to diagnose the right condition to give it the right treatment. So problems that she's coming across. Now, let's just have a look uh, at what we have here. Now, this was the original data here. Uh, each dot here is a vaccine batch. So we see some here are associated with uh, a lot of suspected adverse events. This batch, these batches along the bottom, what one, two, three, four, whatever that is, seven or eight batches along, along let's count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve batches along the bottom there. Essentially, uh, no, <laughs> no adverse reactions. So it does make you wonder what the heck was or indeed wasn't in those batches. Uh, not associated with basically hardly any adverse reactions. Uh, but the green, you see the green there. So again, we see a lot of variation, uh, very heterogeneous uh, in the batches. But of course, was this just a fluke only applying to Denmark? Well, that's why it's necessary to look at another country as well. So she looked at Sweden. So here we have, um, get this right, we've got uh, Denmark, uh, we've got Denmark on the left and we've got Sweden on the right. In this picture, so this is Danish data on the on the left. Uh, A is Danish data, and this is Swedish data, and we are seeing very similar patterns in the uh, in the variation between batches. And the batches that were associated with a lot of adverse reactions in Denmark were also associated with more adverse reactions in Sweden, but many more reported adverse reactions in the early doses of vaccine. And of course, we know from uh, we've talked to uh, other scientists around the world. Um, um, J J uh, uh, um, jo Joshua Getzko, I think it is, in, in we've talked to, um, who reported that the vaccines in the trials, most of them, were made in a completely different way, manufactured in a completely different way to the uh, bacterial preparation vac uh, methodology that was used in the later vaccines, the, the bait and switch idea. So, just before we listen to Vibica. Uh, that's the first paper, the original one. That's the second one there. National study from uh, Denmark, followed up by national data from Sweden. So um, pretty widespread data taken there. Significant batch dependent heterogeneity was found. In other words, some batches were a lot worse than others. Uh, looking at the number of suspected adverse events per thousand doses. Batches associated with higher suspected adverse reaction rates detected in early phases of the vaccination programme. Uh, and uh, positive correlations observed between the two countries for the severity of suspected adverse reactions from vaccines, uh, batches that they shared. So in other words, sometimes a batch of vaccine, some of it will go to Denmark, some of it will go to Sweden, and they'd have comparable levels of uh, suspected adverse reactions which is really quite convincing data, I, I would say, on the, uh, the heterogeneity of the uh, level of uh, suspected adverse reactions from particular vaccine batches. Now, um, conclusion from the paper. Uh, the batch-dependent safety signals observed in Denmark are now confirmed. Confirmed. And Vibeke is away at the moment in, uh, I think she's going to Netherlands now or shortly to also collect data. So she's widening this out to other European countries. But of course, getting the data is a struggle. She's doing a great job on this. Um, confirmed in Sweden suggests that early commercial batches of Pfizer vaccine may have been different from those used later on. Well, I think we were assured that they wouldn't be, but never mind. And these preliminary and uh, hypothesis generating results warrant further study. But of course, that will depend on data being made available by the manufacturers. Don't hold your breath. Let's look at the report from Vibeke now. There's a little wind noise at the very start of this, but it is quite uh, listenable too. So do give her the time. Always great that leading scientists and doctors are reporting to us directly rather than going through intermediates who might uh, confuse the message. Over to Vibeke now. Thank you. Hello, I am Vibeke Manika. I'm a Danish MD, PhD. I'm one of uh, four uh, who has been doing some studies into batch-dependent side effects to the Pfizer vaccine. 
uh, we're just now at the beautiful island in Denmark, Bornholm. The only place in Denmark where they have uh, granite. And it's just such an extraordinary, beautiful place. This is actually my favorite spot in the whole world where I have a run uh, together with my husband, who's also a part of the team and is actually the photographer right now. So we are out on our run here on Bornholm and it's the most beautiful place, I would say, not only in Denmark, but in the world. We are over here because last night we gave a talk uh, to citizens here on Bornholm uh, and to the talk, uh, both vaccinated and unvaccinated people attended the talk where we told about uh, our bad study. I'll tell a little more in, in a second. What I thought was extraordinary with this talk yesterday and, and, and the big audience was that people were there because they were curious. They were curious to know more about the side effects uh, with the vaccines. They were curious to know more about uh, why did why the vaccines, the corona vaccines, didn't protect against transmission, why it was a big scam with the corona passport, why we should never have had the lockdowns and so on. And I want to focus a little on the questions that the audience had. We, my husband and I, my husband is uh, Peter Ries Hansen, he's a professor in cardiology, he's the senior, senior author of our studies, and we were there to give a talk. We told about the bats dependency, we told about the varying pattern, the, the varying safety signals, in this case with Pfizer Corona vaccines, uh, where our studies both on Danish uh, data and on Swedish data has shown that your risk of getting side effects very much depend, when, if you had the Corona vaccine, very much dependent on which batch you had which means that if you had one of the early batches, your risk of getting side effects were much, much higher than if you have had one of the later batches. And actually some of the later batches seems to have given none uh, side effects whatsoever. And what it also showed was that apparently, in this case Pfizer, must have changed the vaccines along the way. And we have only been focusing on the side effects, which could be you know, less or minor side effects, uh, uh, soreness or redness around where you have the injection or more serious side effects and even death. But showing that there was a big difference for your risk of having side effects and that Pfizer did something to the vaccine along the way, I think it's important to stress that then we don't know whether the um, efficacy also changed. My worry is my um, theory is that the, the, along the way Pfizer did something to the vaccine, changed something in the process, in the production, in the transportation or, or you know, many ways of changing it and probably also uh, changed the efficacy, which means that maybe in the end uh, the vaccine had none efficacy whatsoever. We don't know because we don't have these studies. But I want to focus on the questions from the audience because I thought the questions was very relevant. First of all, there was a big mistrust uh, against the authorities. And I understand that because our study, our batch dependence uh, studies, where the first came out uh, with peer review for more than one and a half year ago, should have at least had had the authorities, not only in Denmark, but in all over the Western world, to stop and, and, and focus and reanalyze or just starting to analyze the data which they haven't. Instead, they had and has ignored our very varying findings on official data. Uh, and so I understand why people are mistrusting the authorities, the governments. I also understand why they don't, why they lack trust to the media. Uh, because the media is part of this narrative where they haven't told anything about the, uh, as for example our study, none whatsoever mainstream media has even mentioned the very varying findings of our studies, not only in Denmark but all over the world. So the, the mainstream media is part of the sickness. You can't trust them because they misinform the, the public, they, they withhold very important data like this two studies which both have been through peer review and, and have published. But nevertheless, so a mistrust against the authorities, against the press, but also a 
mistrust uh, concerning vaccines, the safety of vaccines. And we can see that from all over the world that people are withholding, uh, taking not only Pfizer and Corona vaccines, but vaccines as such. And that's, of course, in many aspects, uh, varying. Then also we could see that um, people felt that the democracy, the, the, the censorship, the democracy is, is, is uh, on fire, so to speak, or is, it has maybe in, in many aspects turned into a dictatorship instead because they have taken away our freedom of speech. They have taken away our personal freedom. You saw that with the Corona passport. So it seems like slowly, slowly the democracy in the Western world seems to be turning into, in some ways, a dictatorship, which is, of course, very worrying. And then, least of all, but, you know, very important, there was a big frustration because we could see that at the talk, some of the attendees were vaccine um, um, injured people or re having relatives that were severely vaccine injured. And there was a big frustration against the doctors who wasn't uh, keen of listening or even the opposite, didn't want to hear about vaccine uh, safety, didn't want to go into vaccine injuries. They felt that they went around even to university hospitals here in Denmark and that the doctors, the specialists, didn't want to um, uh, hear about the vaccine injuries, didn't want to consider it as an option, even when the symptoms was very weird and very unusual. And I think that's, of course, uh, very disturbing and also very sad being a doctor myself, that my colleagues or some of my colleagues still are very reluctant to go in and not only uh, try and investigate whether there is a connection, but also do science into this very important matter. And there we go. There we see patients not having the right treatment, not having the right diagnostic, not having the right, I would say, respect. Uh, and responsibility against uh, this very important matter. So here I am and I'm uh, at Bornholm and looking very much forward to have a, a good discussion with my good friend John Campbell and I hope to see you soon. Take care and visit Bornholm in Denmark. It's the most beautiful place in the world. Thank you. Well, thanks very much for that report, Rubika. Excellent, fascinating and indeed really fairly uh, concerning things that need addressed now I would have thought rather than later at a personal level at a wider national level at a international level as well of course and Vibeka has agreed to come and give us a, a full interview on her latest comparison data between Denmark and Sweden when she gets back from her lecture tour so I'm looking forward to that and of course as soon as we've recorded that we'll get it out uh, for a uh, wider peer review and uh, who knows maybe other media outlets will pick it up important data that needs consideration because the implications for the future are immense as more uh, genetic preparations based on this novel messenger ribonucleic acid methodology vaccine genetic treatment, whatever you want to call it, are being rolled out and are under development. And of course, all the other implications for freedom of speech, lack of censorship, threat to democracy, it all kind of, without being melodramatic, it does kind of go together. Anyway, we'll leave it there. Thank you, Rebecca, and full report coming soon. And thank you for watching.